Your party consists of a paladin, a druid, a bard, and a warlock. One night, after a long day of adventuring, you're knocking back a few cold ones at the tavern, regaling the townsfolk with tales of your heroic deeds, when a small girl comes up to you and asks a question. It's not about how you slew the dragon or how you outwitted that evil wizard. Instead, she asks a seemingly simple question. What they call you, where does that come from? My name, the warlock says. Well, I am Agaziah the Dauntless, and my name means Flame of Destiny in my native tongue. Satisfied with his answer, he turns away, only to have the girl tug on his robes. He's a little annoyed, but he's learned to be patient with inquisitive children, especially after what happened in that last village with the cow and the pitchfork. No, no, she says. I mean, what they call you, a warlock. What does that mean? The warlock laughs. Well, I make war on my enemies, of course. And the lock part, the girl asks. He opens his mouth to speak, but no words come out. He's never picked a lock in his life, though he has blown a few open with his Eldritch Blast, but he doesn't think that's why they call him a Warlock. And you, the girl continues, you're a bard, right? What does that mean? For all her storytelling acumen, the bard is at a loss for words, and the druid and paladin are soon assaulted with similar questions. What do those words mean? The Player's Handbook for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition lists 12 character classes. Some of them, like Fighter or Ranger, seem to have obvious origins, but what about the rest? What does that lock in Warlock mean? Where does Paladin come from? And what about commonly used words like Rogue or Wizard? What's the story behind their origin? In this video, I'll take a look at the names of all 12 classes and see if I can learn why they're called what they're called. My starting point for this video was the excellent online etymology dictionary, which I've linked to in the description. If you're interested in word origins, it's a great resource and one that you can lose countless hours in. Not that I know from personal experience. Also, throughout this video, I'll be referring to Proto-Indo-European, which was a prehistoric language that today's European languages, including English, share as a common ancestor. So without further ado, let's see if we can't answer that village girl's question and bail out our poor warlock as we uncover the history behind D&D class names. Of all the class names covered in this video, Barbarian was the only one I knew the definitive origin of before consulting the Etymology Dictionary. You've probably heard of the word Barbarian in the context of the Roman Empire and how its citizens used the term to refer to the tribes of Germania or Britain. To a speaker of Roman or Greek, the only civilized tongues in their view, languages of those people were a series of unintelligible syllables, a kind of primitive speech that sounded like bar 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 to Roman ears. In the same way that we might refer to someone as a Virginian or Italian, someone who speaks the bar bar language is therefore a barbarian. Post-Roman times, the word has often been applied to any foreigner who seems uncivilized or uncouth to the speaker. The Japanese of the late Tokugawa shogunate used a slogan translated as Revere the Emperor, Expel the Barbarians, referring to Americans and Europeans who were trying to make inroads into the isolated nation. Barbarian might also be the source for the name of the Berber tribes of North Africa, who populated the region known as the Barbary Coast. But in the context of most fantasy games, a barbarian takes on more of the classical and medieval sense of a savage and primitive warrior similar to the kinds of the Romans and later Christian nations of Europe contended with on their borders. I've already covered the origins of bards in a previous video, but what about the word bard itself? Unlike the tales weed by bards, this one is a pretty brief and straightforward explanation. It seems to come from the Proto-Celtic bardos, which is itself derived from the Proto-Indo-European guerdos, which appropriately enough means someone who praises. Other words derived from guer, which is the root of guerdos, include agree, gracious, and congratulate, all of which sound like the sorts of pleasantries you'd want your bard singing about. You can probably guess that the words cleric and clergy are related, both referring to people in service to a religion. Their source is the Greek klerikos, which is a word that means pertaining to an inheritance. That might seem odd, because while some clerics might have had access to vast riches, especially those at the top of large and established religions like the Pope, you don't tend to think of rank and file priests as particularly wealthy, and certainly not the way we think of an inheritance today as coming from a deceased relative, though some people did pledge their wealth to the church upon their deaths. 
Instead, the meaning of inheritance in this case comes appropriately enough from the Bible, specifically the book of Deuteronomy, which says, The priests of the Levites and all the tribes of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he hath said unto them. Another reference to a holy inheritance that you're probably more familiar with comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 5, which contains the well-known phrase, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Medieval clergy also tended to be the best educated people around, meaning that they typically handled the bureaucratic affairs of their secular masters. The modern word clerk is derived from cleric, which explains why people who do various types of office work are said to be in the clerical profession. Historically, the Druids originated in Celtic lands and are especially well attested in Britain and Gaul, where they were described in detail by none other than Julius Caesar during his wars in the first century BC. Druids in fantasy are seen as holy men and women who derive their magical talents from the natural world, so it should come as a little surprise that the word Druid has a tree as one of its components. Specifically, we go back to the Proto-Indo-European word deru, which means tree, especially oak, along with the term wid, which means to know or to see. Therefore, deruid, or druid, is one who knows trees, or in another sense, oak seer. Keep both of those words in mind, because they'll come into play when we're talking about other classes. Another fantasy staple that you'll often encounter is the dryad, a beautiful type of fae that's typically bound to a tree. It doesn't take much to understand the linguistic similarity between dryad and druid. But here's another interesting connection. The words tree and true are similar, and they're both derived from that Proto-Indo-European word deru. In this case, you tend to think of someone who's true as being steadfast and sturdy, just like a solid and unyielding oak tree. You're probably thinking there's not much behind the word origin of fighter. It's just someone who fights after all, right? That's tree, I mean true, but what about fight itself? The Etymology Dictionary says the term comes from the Proto-Indo-European peck, which means to comb or pluck out wool or hair, and later came to mean a kind of rough pulling, which would then be applied to all sorts of violence. But how did peck become fight? Another source I've found spells peck as payek, which at least gives us the I sound. Also, that GH in fight wasn't always silent, think of how we pronounce ghost, and G and K sound very similar, G versus K. With all that in mind, the lineage from Payak to fight is a little clearer. And the word strike, which is something you might do to someone in a fight, is also derived from Payak in a more straightforward manner. Whether you're thinking about monks in the European style, typically Christian men with shaved heads, or in the Asian style, which more resemble the Kung Fu masters represented by the D&D class, Monks tend to live a solitary existence, and it's that solitude that lends them their name. The prefix mono means single or alone, such as in monorail or monogamy. And that's where we get the word monk, from this notion of solitude or singularity. But here's a question. Why spell it M-O-N-K when it sounds more like M-U-N-K? Well, it used to be spelled with a U, but was changed because in old Gothic scripts, M, U, and N looked almost identical. So the U was replaced with an O to make it more legible. This is the same reason we have O's instead of U's in words that have an O followed by an N, like honey or London. And no, in case you're wondering, that U, O substitution has nothing to do with this word. Get your minds out of the gutter. The Paladin is a holy warrior kind of a cross between a fighter and a cleric. They tend to be of more noble status than your basic warrior, and that comes to light when you understand that the root of their name is the Latin Palatinus, meaning palace official. The Palatine Hill was one of the seven hills of Rome, where palaces for emperors and palatial estates for the wealthy were built. In later times, the Palatine Guard served the Vatican as a militia group to protect the Pope and the city itself. Other uses of the term throughout history include the Twelve Knights of Charlemagne, who were called Paladins according to the Matter of France, a 12th century work detailing the legendary history of France. Less nobly, Hermann Goering was dubbed Hitler's Paladin, 
and has been the subject of multiple books with that title or subtitle. In the same way that fighter is just someone who fights, ranger is simply someone who ranges. The Etymology Dictionary links the word range with ring, meaning circle, but also with putting things in rows or lines, like in a range or rank or mountain range. Frankly, I'm a little stumped as to how circle and line can have the same meaning, unless it's in some geometrical context. I spent some time looking at Proto-Indo-European roots to see if I could make a better link, and came up empty. So I'll have to admit, this one kind of stumps me. But here's an interesting side note. The Etymology Dictionary has no idea where range of the kitchen appliance comes from, but I found another site, Worldwide Words, that thinks it's from the 15th century when you'd see, quote, a collection of hearths and ovens set in a row under one chimney, as one might find in the kitchen of a large house serving many people. Like rogues themselves, Etymology Dictionary thinks that the word rogue has a shadowy origin. It guesses that the word comes from Roger, which was slang for a beggar or vagabond who pretends to be an educated fellow down on his luck. And that comes from the Latin rogare, meaning to ask or beg, which is something that both educated people and vagrants often do. And if you've been around the internet long enough, you've undoubtedly seen people misspell rogue as rouge, meaning red. But there doesn't seem to be any link between the two words. Maybe it's just me, but I always have trouble remembering if the final four letters of sorcerer are E-R, O-R, O-R, E-R, E-R, or... It didn't always have to be this way. Apparently, the term used to be just sorcerer, which seems simpler. That came from the old French sorcier, which is derived from Latin sortarius, meaning teller of fortunes. In ancient Rome, a priest would draw lots, or sortes, to divine the will of the gods. And sortes itself is derived from the root word source, meaning fate or fortune. The extra ER was added to sorcerer... Well, we're not sure why. It was probably done just to confuse future writers. Alright, so what about that story at the top of this video? Where does Warlock come from? Despite what we thought originally, it actually has nothing to do with war. It comes from the Old English Warloga, which means traitor, liar, and similar words. Given Warlock's predisposition for villainy, it checks out. In this case, Ware isn't related to war as an armed conflict, but is instead related to the word for truth or fidelity. Remember Deru from when we were talking about druids? Especially significant in this case, it can also mean compact or agreement, which is the sort of thing a warlock typically makes with a higher power. Maybe you've heard of the Old English term Weir Guild, which meant a kind of contract payment for a person's life. It's also related to words we use today that start with V-E-R and have to do with truth or judgment, like verdict or verify. The loga part of Weir Loga means lie, so a warlock could be considered someone who lies about a contract. So, not only does Warlock have nothing to do with war, it also has nothing to do with locks, or even lakes in Scotland. It's pretty easy to understand the root word of wizard. It's simply wise, which is what wizards were typically thought to be. Wise itself comes from the Proto-Indo-European word wide, which means to see or to know. Remember the wid part of druid? This is also where we get words like wit and view. As for the female equivalent of a wizard, witch doesn't have a clear origin, though it was sometimes used to refer to a man with terms like he-witch or man-witch. The second term was especially used if the man in question was named Joseph and he was very sloppy. Okay, I may have made that last part up. I hope you've enjoyed this look into the word origins of D&D classes, and it's got you thinking about not only the long journeys your characters take, but also the long journeys their class names took to get to the forms we recognize today. I really like etymology, so if there are any other words you'd like me to dive into the history of, leave a comment and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and check out the rest of the videos on Fantasy Roots that cover the historical origins of other popular gaming myths and legends. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.